Welcome everyone to the Puff Drink Talk podcast. My name is Conrad Schubach. I'm George Abaiju. Dylan Wilson. Hilton Kill. And Richard Avery. We do have a special guest today. He's a specialist. He's our specialist panel today. And uh, ironically enough, there's been some current events that tie into your speciality. Uh, cigars? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know Dylan. Well, speaking of cigar, cigars, I know uh, Dylan is going to make fun of me, but here's the beloved Backwoods. I don't know if you've ever tried Backwoods before. Clint Eastwood style, leaf, yeah, loose leaf roll. Um, please help yourself if you ever want to partake in one. I don't really recommend. <laughs> you don't recommend? No, it's, this are, is like you're yeah, going your soul out of a body. Mm. And then yeah, yeah, you, you have that you one. Just stick to Oliva, stick to your Estebans. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Estates. Good, good stuff. Drew yeah. Estates, yeah. Have a factory smoke even. Don't have a... Don't have a <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about. These are great. Um, that is that is a sweet um, cigar. But uh, is it the original one? It's the or? original. Sweet and aromatic. Okay. Well, you know what? Oh, now I'm convinced. To be fair to you, I've never tried that one, so maybe it's not bad. Yeah. I had the berry one, and it was just too much. Well, you're not supposed to actually smoke them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, roll something out. else up, right? Yeah. Well, and just a concept. Yeah, that's, it was just a concept. That's actually what it ends up being. It's just a giant blunt at the end of the day. But you know what? Yeah. That's why I wonder, like, the quality of the tobacco they're putting on the inside of those, because they're meant to just... You throw it in the trash and you just use the wrapper. How so, dare you? How I mean, dare you? It's, it's still a step up from the cigarette, right? That's true. You see? This is the presumption. Man- and a Swisher Sweet. Sweet. Have you ever had a Swisher <laughs> Sweet? Or, oh. You've got to be careful. Swisher Sweet owns Drew Estate. Oh, really? Ah, see? It's, it's all, all part of the conspiracy. Exactly. <laughs> it's a parent within a parent. We need to get out our tinfoil hats. <laughs> Bring them out. Bring them out. <laughs> Oh, that we you lined the ceiling. We right? get oh, it. Right. <laughs> oh my God! We have man, a tiny I one. Look at, Look at that tiny uh, one. Uh, <laughs> it's like one of those old tiny. Yeah, I'll just put the. I just need to protect my drink. Really, that's all. I'm doing. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Whatever it takes. <laughs> so what, what happened? Um, just a. Can you? Update yeah, so re- on what, what kind of attack you're talking about? Recent event. So um, the latest was the shipping container ran into the Ravens uh, Bridge. I was actually impressed when he told me that because he's so. What's Raven? What do you mean Ravens? The Baltimore Bridge? Ravens because he's just into NFL. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fran- well, can I blow your mind <laughs> even a little bit more? Okay. The, the name of the bridge is Francis Scott Key. Hmm. Do you know who Francis Scott Key is? No idea. I told you earlier in the week, surprise him. Oh. You do know this. Yeah, uh, yeah. he mentioned it, and I don't remember now. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say it and be like, fuck, and be impressed. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. Right, tell him. He is the author of the Star Spangled Banner. Wow. I hope I said that right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're saying this was an attack upon America. Exactly. Oh. If you're going to, if Take you're going to attack hats. America. <laughs> yeah. So we need to bring the team for our hats back yeah. on. <laughs> I mean, that's a it's a big name. It is a big name. I mean, and it's a big bridge, 1.6 miles, so it's almost two miles long. And don't they, isn't it's that like the important. busiest harbor in the country? Wow. 13th, 13th busiest harbor in the United, in the world. In the world. world. Okay. Because in the I world. Think in the United States, it's probably the biggest. It's it's not the biggest. I think the, no, the, no. the harbor in L.A. is is bigger. Oh yeah, there's LA. LA and San Francisco, but it is not the size of busyness. Busyness, Traffic. it's like seven. So on the, on the east side side for sure is the busiest. So when I worked um, answer, answering phone calls for the state of Maryland during the pandemic, most dock workers called in and they were like, "Yeah, our hours got cut. And we were able to f- we're filing unemployment." Um, but I talked to a lot of the dock workers about life and work and stuff, and they go. Every single car that comes from Europe, most uh, all European cars come through the Port of Maryland. They get assembled at the factories outside. They get distri- uh, distributed, distributed. Uh, but all vehicles are Porsches, BMWs, 
Lamborghinis, whatever you have from Europe, from Europe. comes through that port. Wow. Yeah. So for it to go down, I mean, that's going to be a huge blow, not only to the United States as far as certain types of goods, but out of that port, we export a lot of goods to Europe, Africa, from Baltimore. So that's going to be delayed now because of this. Oh, they were going to have to out redirect to, to all the ports. Exactly. How long do you think it'll take them to uh, clean all that up and rebuild? The bridge? Months? I don't know. Pace the United States is with all of its stuff. It's going to take two or three years. Years. So, you it's know. Fun. Barely an inconvenience. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, my God. You <laughs> took us that. five minutes to use it. <laughs> <laughs> but the tinfoil conspiracy theory behind what happened was that there was a cyber attack um, that diverted and routed that that shipping container um, into one of the main I guess focal points of the bridge where if it hit Man, it, it, just, it just collapsed instantly this is like an um, attack to the land I mean, if it's true, that yeah, is no, part of the conspiracy of course, theory. Yeah, yeah, I'm not affirming that. Didn't I'm just saying that it is. The master or the pilot or somebody on there is like Ukrainian. And so then people are like, what does that mean? Like, I don't know what it means, but throw that into the mix. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Tate says. Uh, yeah, I read ship that. Was, ship was cyber attack. I read that on X. Uh, yeah. I, if Cobra Tate's saying it. <laughs> I. I <laughs> <laughs> Uh, USA Today, no proof of cyber attack on Baltimore cargo ship. Uh, you know, so the, the whole concept of terrorism and cyber terrorism and cyber warfare, uh, like, you, if you don't have the terror, right, if you if you just want to orchestrate damage, we could orchestrate millions and millions and millions of dollars of damage here in this room. And we do that by all getting on I-35 and getting on MOPAC and slowing down 45 miles an hour. Right, we could we could because I thirty five is the channel throughout all of Texas and most of America. Mm -hmm. I thirty five right. runs from Texas all the way, practically to Canada. It's like thirty miles short of Canada in Minnesota. Yeah, you could impact national shipping. Yes, just by driving really slow. But if you're not telling anybody that you're doing this for whatever political reason or gain. That it's not terrorism; it's just you driving like a dick, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's where if if this was a cyber event, somebody would have taken credit, either a cyber yeah. gang or there is more to gain revealing who you are. Yes, right. And sometimes Definitely. they just claim it because right, we wait for four days. Who's, who said it? Was, nobody said it was them. It was us. We did it. Exactly. <laughs> right? Why not? Just for more clout. Right? Yes. We, we did the attack. So. I would, I would eh, eh, eh. now may, the uh, the reverse has also been true because there have been cyber gangs that have broken into some very very secure federal systems and they were like where where are we what did we just take oh get out get out get out get out right because they're like oh That's we're going to be gaining lot more attention than we want to deal with right so it yeah. can kind of go both ways like Personal opinion, do you feel like this could be practice run, trial run for something larger at the end of the day, or? Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to turn my phones on. Uh, the reality is that, like, listen, I don't, I don't know if you've ever played a racing game, uh, but play a racing game that you've never played before remotely via a command prompt. And then try to tell me that the guy doing that drove the bridge into the pier successfully. Like, how many trial runs would you need to skillfully do that? There's not the sensors on the boat aren't designed for that kind of functionality. Right. Sure. Right. They're like, hey, like you know, avoidance systems. Hey, you're too close to something. It's like the it's the backup camera it starts beeping in your car. The likelihood that somebody just went. I'm going to hack this boat, and then I'm going to steer it into that pier. Seems kind of, from a technical standpoint, is it possible? Yeah. Is it likely? I, I, I call sus. Mm -hmm. But that's just, that's just me. Okay. I mean, when was the last time you actually, like, like, how many times did you have to play Mario Kart before you could successfully dodge that banana? Sure. 
guts. Now, yeah, now we're did. now we're talking about doing that via What's keyboard right? and a, a vehicle you've probably never piloted to hit a target you've never tried to tar- hit before. Yeah, it just a seems, lot of things. When you when you break down the logic, it seems seems weak. But so conspiracy theory. Debunked. 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 Wow, oh, I would call oh, that's bold. Uh, Those aren't my words. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is my words. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's still nice to go on X and see that, uh, start that conversation and see people get riled up about oh, People get riled up about it. China did it. Why? ISIS did it. Why? I, now, ISIS, yeah, again, the terrorism. Like, if you're just trying to. You're just trying to do damage and talk about we can strike you anywhere. We can do some fear, right? There's a lot of cyber warfare happening in the world right now. Right. And you see, when I remember, um, right, so that the fear sells, remember that the expression fear sells. And we thought, okay, all, the other media would be the top of that. Think about the way we live now in all this social media and all the kind of media we have. Uh, we are in constant, it, it's constant threat, it's a constant of um, feeling, you know, you know, like a, that something is going to happen, it's just about to happen. Think about the cost of that, because you're talking about, you know, different kind of costs. Think about the cost of this, the anxiety and everything else. How much does it cost? Some dude is going to go out of business. His shipping company is going to go out of business. His, his, what was that? There was like a dude... Uh, wasn't it the Evergrande that was stuck in the Suez Canal? Yes. yes. The guy had like half, like, what was it, five, I can't remember the numbers, like five million dollars of sheep on that or something. Yes. Like he had like a perishable. And they're like, mm-hmm. I'm done. That's my whole business. Like I was doing this trade. I do this, do this one shipment once a year and it's all going to perish on that boat and I'm done. That's funny. Hmm. Right? That's just Yeah, not... but it, that one took ages to clear. Yeah. Because yeah. it was stuck. I was reading about people that lived on turns, one side of the bridge, turns. worked on another side of the bridge, and now their commute just added like three hours. They got to go through these other states to go all the way around. So it's, yeah. it's going to cause all kind of logistic issues, not even just shipments. But work from home. Let's go. Trucks. Work from home. Yeah. I feel sorry for <laughs> the guy that can't, literally works on the exact other side of the bridge at that 7-Eleven. And yeah. just drives just the bridge length. And then now. People doing trades over there, you know. Like, the fuck, I don't God damn it, you know? Just, just fly a drone. <laughs> You're all set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. That's going to be a logistic nightmare. What is the, the recent, uh, that can be talked about, uh, biggest cyber attack that uh, happened? Oh, that was the, ch- the Chance Healthcare hack. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, 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 yes. Chance Healthcare, which was the subsidiary of United Healthcare. Yes. I mean, Chance Healthcare was thirteen billion. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not like for a subsidiary. That's pretty enormous. Well, yeah. United United you, 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 United is a hundred and fifty billion dollars. It's like number two. I think it's number two in the in the stock market. It's huge, it's huge. Nine in the world. So I have my insurance. Though. Yes. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Inside Dell, they, they spoke a lot about that. There was they like, were down for a, a month, I think. Yes. It's just the, the, the usual, the same usual problems. We, you saw the same with the uh, Caesar and MGM, right? MGM, that was the greatest event for Caesar's history. Oh. Was MGM and Caesar's got book got hacked by the same organization in the same way, at the same time, on the same day. And oh, that was man. them impersonating an employee of the organization, calling their IT company, getting the IT company to reset a password and get access to the hackers. When the hackers got the system, MGM's like, we've tested this, we're good. But they only did desktop exercises. They didn't really like, let's go human interaction like this. rent a warehouse and make a hot site and really make sure we can spin up all our systems. They never did that test. Mm-hmm. It was just theoretically, we should be able to recover from this. And somebody was like, can we recover? Yeah, we can recover. We're sure of it. All right, great. Tell them to F off. Was it even costs? Was it even... It was just that we don't... We are protected. Yeah, we, 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 we're good. We got this. <laughs> and so, but Caesar was like, here's the money. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And But MGM was down for a week. And all those customers went over to Caesar's. And they said outright, yeah, we paid $10 million, but we made 40 
Because <laughs> MGMs will Get shut the hell down. Out of yeah. Here. Yeah. Right? MGMs will <laughs> shut down and they're like, who's gonna where are they gonna go? Oh, they they all came to us to gamble. Yeah. But you see this balance, man. Mm-hmm. And it was the third time we mentioned like there are different ways to measure how the money changes hands and you know and how how much it costs. This is just another case. The entertainment doesn't stop, right? Mm. So the customers they would have to go somewhere. Yep. It's just like gas, right? I need gas for my car. This gas station is closed. I'm gonna find another gas station. Another one. Yeah. I gotta camp. I gotta go. Let's go. Where are we gonna get? Oh, this one's closed. I gotta go. I'm just I'm gonna have to go somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's the same thing. They did a desktop exercise. They never actually went through and did a full. Can we rip and replace? Can we just virtualize? So we've got clients. We we virtualize their entire network. Put it on a really high end server in the back. Do a full pen test, do a full teardown. Mm-hmm. What can we do? What can we not do? How do we secure it? How do we make it better? That whole process. But most most people don't do that. And most big businesses don't do that. For the exact same reason, they don't really do a lot of good cybersecurity training. Because the moment an organization looks at it and says, you want me to give three hours of cybersecurity training to every employee? I have 5,000 employees. That's 15,000 man hours. I'm just theoretically dumping in a bucket? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, well, okay, let's put it in the risk reward calculator. And uh, yeah. No, <laughs> just pay an <laughs> extra. Yeah, yeah. Pay $10,000 more in cybersecurity insurance. Actuaria, right? yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. And then not worry about it. Until it happens, then you're like, oops. Should have paid attention. Fire the CISA and hire a new one. And, yes. and then he, it's all his fault. Yeah. Out he goes. <laughs> happens again. That's so funny you say that because I literally just had to sit through a 30 minute cyber cyber attack training for the company that I work at. And I have to do it three times a year. The refresher courses. So my sure. wife has to do that as well. Yeah. So there was this friend, he worked for Prosetics. It's a public technology company, uh, right, in Brazil. So every time he had a meeting, it was in the old, in the old days, right? He would see how many people would, would participate in that and he would say how much the meeting would cost just for people to understand it's just like you, you know like he's got a calculation okay this fee was going to be one hour who just say hey this is how much it's costing and it's a and this is a state-owned company you know so come on it's important to know how much it costs and are they even doing the right training yeah, right? exactly. Like, so you, two, that's the second problem. Yeah, yeah what like, is, is, it, is it just wasted? So one of the funny things is that uh, there's there's a guy on YouTube that's a former uh, internal security and former customer service uh, manager, kind of from Blizzard Interactive, uh, and he talks about his time. And, and one of the things he says is he's like, the longer somebody was in, you know, I would I would call people and I would social engineer information out. I want to find. Hey, what places can I can I eat around you? Where where can we go? You know, well, what what part of town are you in? Is the, what's the weather like there? So I was trying to find out where the employees would go to eat, so I can go Proxmark scan their cards, and then I could go back and scan in as them, and, you know, p- pretend to be breaking the location. But I noticed the longer that turned the employee, the easier it was to socially engineer pe- information out of them. Because they only gave training in the first two months of their employment, and then they never refreshed it. So the longer they were there, the more likely it was that I could get them to practically tell me everything that I wanted to know. So once we just refreshed training, yes, then security got tightened up, and I, I could get the information. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's it's it's. Hence why I have it three or four times a year. Yes. I have I have these refresher courses. It's because you're clicking on those links. That's what. So that's <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and, they, and they do that. Yeah. They, no, no, but they do that. They send out these test uh, phishing emails. Mm-hmm. And if you click on the link, they're like, ah, Can I, you mother effer, we got you. Like and you. they know. Yeah. <laughs> think about what AI is going to do inside of companies. I don't know how much is going to be legal or illegal because you know, the AI is going to be monitoring this in seconds. <laughs> I've never not gotten a fish. Uh, my my fishing is one hundred percent, and just like you just have to, you have to make sure you're doing a right. Like you know, here's a free <laughs> refund from Amazon. <laughs> what? Like oh, somebody used your card to to buy uh, an Apple iPhone and uh, you know iPad and 
uh, a MacBook Air, an iPad Pro, like or iPods Pro, or whatever it is. Like people get tuned in on that, but if if you went to so there's a there's a great example of a phishing campaign that was 134 percent successful. They targeted all of these people, and they got more, more. people, more clicks uh-huh. than, than there people. were people they sent it to. And it was because they targeted the sales v- the sales VP of marketing, and he just passed it to his entire team. He said, "Hey, somebody follow up Get on the this," hell out of here. and it just went to the whole team, and everybody clicked on the link. Wow! And it's because training's a thing. So once you make it, one of the reasons that I, I talked about i thirty five. Uh, is that that's part of my, like, super nightmare scenario that I talk about, right? Who are you targeting? Why are you targeting them? And how do I elicit a reaction? So let's pick a soft target. The soft target I like to talk about is chiropractors. Why? Because chiropractors are almost never really in the black. They're always kind of looking for another customer. They're always trying to look to grow. Mm -hmm. And so they don't spend a lot of money on preventative maintenance. They don't spend, typically have an IT guy and they're certainly not spending money in cybersecurity, usually. I can easily with Google say, find every chiropractor within 10 miles of I-35. And then I can craft that email. And all it is is for you to resonate with what you're reading. I was in an accident last week on an I-35. They think it's their I-35. Their office is seven miles from I-35. Exactly. They're, right. they're not thinking Minnesota I-35 or Texas I-35 or Oklahoma. What doesn't matter. I was in an accident on I-35. I've talked to my general practitioner. They recommend I see a chiropractor for therapeutic adjustment. Do you have a therapist on staff? Do you take insurance? When is the latest opening in your schedule? So I'm asking questions Mm-hmm. That they're used to seeing. Do you take insurance? Well, it's a coin flip on whether a chiropractor does right. or doesn't. So it's a legitimate question. So they're like, okay, they're close to me and they're asking questions that a customer is going to ask. And then I'm going to say, attached are my old MRIs and x rays. My goodness. Yeah. Can, do you have, and this is where the networking that we're in, do you have. A personal injury law lawyer you can refer to me, right? Chiropractors desperately want leads from personal injury law firms. They're very happy to feed them back. So the person's looking at this and going, not only am I possibly going to get a customer, but I might be able to feed my referral partner all at the same time. This is exactly the email I dream of getting. You would have you would have to have that person's hand chained down. For them Finally, not to double click <laughs> that those MRIs and X-rays, <laughs> and to reply back. This is when we're available. We, you know, we can get you in our office, such and such and such. But I wrote malware two days before, and embedded it in that PDF, and they're low-end antivirus. Maybe they're just running Windows Defender, which is not bad. That's like actually what all the hackers target to try and get by nowadays. But the likelihood, if I just wrote it. It's just going to cut right through anybody's antivirus. I'm going to dwell on all those machines. I'm probably going to get 9,000 networks. Jeez. I'm going to take all their machines over. And then the I'm just going to dwell there for like 90 days. And then the ransomware event is just a red herring so that you get locked out all your computers so that I can clean out your PayPal, your Samsung Pay, your Apple Pay, Whatever other credit cards you have attached, because everybody's saving those in their browsers. Mm-hmm. Everybody's saving them on their. There, there might even be an Excel spreadsheet on a computer somewhere that's just like got all my banking passwords in. Right? Jesus so I, I'm just going to be they're they're going to be locked out, and they're going to think that this is a ransomware event. But really, I'm just cleaning out every employee's everything, and I've got all their emails, and I'm sending out emails to them, and doing business email compromise, and like a a well crafted, thought out attack. To impact thousands, we just don't. We don't see that. We don't see that happen, and it's not hard to do. So when we're talking like, if people want to do mass impact, we have we haven't seen a real cyber event yet. Not genuine. Not of that scale. And, and hackers don't do that. There must be a reason. There is the. I like to use the phrase. There's the right size hacker for you. 
right? And <clears throat> most hackers, if they have their skill, don't want to do those, things, right? There's a great video um, on YouTube called Rats and Slaves. And it's translated, so you'd have, I think it's in German, but it's translated, it's closed caption on YouTube. And it just talks about a rat, which stands for a remote access tool, mm -hmm. and a slave, which is a computer that's already been compromised. Mm -hmm. Typically what happens is somebody sends out 10 million link emails, 99.9% .9 of them get blocked and sent to spam. Well, you think about that, that's still like you know, 10,000 computers, give or take my math. Maybe it's only 1,000, I don't know. Um, and hackers go through that, but it's not they're not real hackers, they're like the virtual assistant for the hackers, mm -hmm. right? They're going through it. Run the scan. Oh, this has QuickBooks installed. This is probably a business. Most home users don't have QuickBooks installed. Oh, this has Photoshop installed. Oh, has this? Oh, this has dental software. Healthcare. This has this soft. This has Tronworks. Oh, this is a law office. Like they start segregating those, and then those leads, those computers are worth money according to what bucket they're in. And then people can go on to an exchange and buy X number of computers. So I did this presentation for the Texas State Bar a couple of years ago. And while I was doing the presentation, I live engaged with a, uh, a hacker from a marketplace and said, how many computers do you have compromised right now that I can buy that are part of the Texas legal system? They're in the legal system or they're in a law office? It can be a state, municipal, I don't care. It's legal or a law office. And the answer was 12600 And the cost was $30 for an endpoint, $200 for a server. And I asked what their server inventory was, and they said it's about 200 So I could just walk in, if I had the money, just buy them all, and then I could have them deploy whatever ransomware I wanted to deploy. They would launder the money. It would do all of it for 40%. I could literally be like, here is half a million dollars, ransom are all these people, and then thank you very much for my half a billion dollars back, and now I'm going to a non-extradition country beach, and I'm going to drink Mai Tais, and bribe the local government, because if you don't do that, you're going to get rolled up and killed. <laughs> you do get scared yet? Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, my mind is... <laughs> <laughs> Earlier today, I was thinking, right? So we were supposed to be with the advance of technology. We we're supposed to be safer, or to feel safer, huh? right? We're supposed to feel safer. I mean, we have more sensors. We have different ways to control the AI. But it, it seems like when after you listen to him, I, yeah, it, it, it's you see, you will be a victim. You just need to know when that's going to happen. It's just about when. It's because you're not protected. Everything you, you have, it's you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah, yeah. What does a what does a screwdriver represent to you? What does a hammer represent to you? What does a chainsaw represent to you? They're all lethal devices. Yet we all probably have some shape or form of them in our garage. Yeah. What are we using it for? The screwdriver can help us put stuff together. Or it can help me pry open that filing cabinet, or you know, stab a tire. Maybe I mean, most people haven't tried to stab a tire before. That's not. It's not easy. Uh, so you're not wrong in that we are creating new tools to help defend ourselves, and we're creating new technologies to make the defending of ourselves easier. But we are creating new tools that can be used by people who want to do things in a nefarious way. And, but I don't think that that's that's not different, and I don't think that's ever going to change. Yeah. It has been like that, you know, forever, you know, anything. Even, even like, you know, a simple book, uh, when people didn't know how to read, mm -hmm. but then you found somebody writing it and then mm -hmm. reading it. So that person would have more power over mm -hmm. anybody else that wouldn't, mm -hmm. right? So the hacker is, you know, these days, you know, they are people that have more power on illiterate. using something because they really know how to use it well. Mm -hmm. So we are illiterate. That basically, that's yes. what we, that's yeah. what we're saying. Um, well, partially, let's say that. Yeah. In that sense. Right. It, 
we all have, you know, if you're 40 years old, you had as much time on this earth as anyone else. What did you spend that time learning? Right? Yeah. When did you have your first aha moment with, oh, I can get into something, I can break into something, I can break something, I can build something, right? Mm -hmm. So for some people, the aha moment was their dad showing them how to put a table together. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could do so much with woodworking, or I could learn how to weld, or I could do all these other things. For me, it was my father being the locksmith showing me how to drill a safe. Right? This is how you drill a safe, this is how you pick a lock. The symbology is there, yeah. And he always, uh, early on, he kind of said to me, he's like, 60% of all of my calls are breaking people back into their own stuff. Right there, the, the, they lost, they lost the What's the percentage the car, again? 60%. A lot, they're breaking the break. I'm, I'm getting the back in their car. They put the, I mean, this is mm -hmm. the early 80s. So, mm -hmm. um, keys in the car, the key broke off in the lock at the house. They left the keys in the house. So, something happened where they need to get back into the thing that they locked themselves out of. Mm -hmm. So, he, he very early on was like, learn how to break back in to the security that you set up because you're going to need. But I find it interesting that he just said 60% is breaking back in. What's the other 40%? 40% is usually setting up infrastructure, oh, uh, like master keying locks or putting things together, building out stuff. Protection. Yeah. yeah. Most of our, almost, I got to, I, I know people on some pretty big cybersecurity incident teams. They fly around the nation. And they respond to these big, big events. And like I asked them, like, how often is it like some super elite hacker, you know, discovers a zero day that nobody else has ever found? Zero day is uh, a term for the manufacturer doesn't know this exists or the world at large doesn't know this exists. Right. Right. So I've got a zero day. I'm going to cut through the firewall and then I'm going to install some malware and I'm going to scan the network and I'm going to blah, 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 blah. Like, like you see in the movies. I'm like, how often is that? And they're like, never. That, that's never it. it always some something didn't have two-factor authentication some port was opened up somebody installed a wi-fi and they were just a normal user and they plugged the wi-fi access point into the wall mm -hmm. like it's it's always some really low level thing but you've got 500 low level things you've got to look out for right but that's almost always it's, it's very rarely yeah, I remember when I was uh, finishing my university in 1999, uh, I did computer science. And uh, my final project was on security. And I did the research at the time with my university level knowledge and there was no internet. Uh, well, little internet um, in, in 99. Um, but most of my research from magazines, books, uh, and the internet at the time was that 75% uh, of like hacking and, and attacks on, on, on security in, in companies' systems were people that didn't lock their computers. They didn't do the Windows control of okay. Dell you know, to lock their computer, to left it open. And then somebody would have, you know, that they didn't work on that place, but they were there. And then, you know, well, oh, there's a computer open here. Let me come in here and, and put a, a flop disc, you know, mm -hmm. at the time, because it was the three, three and a half or mm -hmm. five and a quarter, yeah. you know, flop disc. And then, not, not the old eight inch? <laughs> no, not that old. <laughs> no, not, not that old. But um, it was like that. These days, and today, is that still a thing or? Uh, everything is still kind of the case. Uh, typically what we we run into is just that there's nothing. There's security options exist. All of those security options are built into Windows or they're built into Mac. They're built into whatever you got. People just don't turn that stuff on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? There's nothing that, that you could Storage is super cheap. Computers are super cheap. There's nothing that prevents you from having a USB drive with everything that you own backed up on. And then that could be in a safe deposit box. Like it's not, it's not very hard to do, but people consider themselves very busy and they don't, they just don't do it. So it's, it's, it's a weird, 
it's it's just a lot of strange thought processes. I'm going to do that tomorrow. It's just like somebody changing their oil in their car or going to the dentist. Or There's so many things, that, you know, hey, here's my checklist. Oh, I got to change the air filter in my house once a month. Okay, if we did everything that every industry says we should do as best practice, we wouldn't have time to work. Have no time to, to do anything really? in your life. Yes. So you have to sacrifice something. <laughs> yeah. And usually people are like, eh, computer. I, I, why worry about it? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting. How much money did uh, the that, that health insurance company? Uh, lost. Oh, there's. I think they paid out two billion dollars in claims or something like that. Jeez. Just a small. Yeah. This is hardly probably. an inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two billion dollars. Not in claims. No, no, not really. <laughs> yeah. Like what do you? What do you? And they they might have had cybersecurity insurance to cover all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, maybe they maybe they dotted all the every year. There's so there's. About six years ago, you could get away with just checking a bunch of boxes and then having a cybersecurity claim, and they'd come in. Here's your million dollars for the ransomware, and out you go. It was almost like the old uh, fake car accidents of the '90s. That you know, a doctor would write up some statement: well, "You got in an accident with you, and you had a collision, and this car never actually existed, and this car never actually existed." And it's a doctor on payroll, and there's you know a family of eight that got crammed in that car, and they all have back injuries, and it's. It, it's the same thing, but now the insurance companies have, have caught on. Like, hey, we need to have cybersecurity professionals. We need to vet. And now when they come in, they're like, did you do the 10 steps that are required for this policy to be active? No, you didn't do this step. Boom, the whole thing's void. Yes. Like, you're, you're, you're on your own here. Good luck. Or worse, they come in and do the incident response. They have a team fly out. They do all of these things. And then they find out. They're like, oh, here's our bill. Because none of this was covered. So here's an extra fifty thousand dollars on top of your, your breach and your damages and your problems. I had a, a referral partner called me up one night and he's like, Hey, I got a I got a referral for you. It's a clinic in, in San Antonio. They got hacked and, and they the ransomware and they got a bunch of problems and their internal IT team is is trying to fix it. I'm like, Whoa. Whoa, like get me on the phone with that, that clinic owner, like now. Right now. Um, he's like, oh, well, that, that that's not going to be, you know, it's Friday, 7 p.m. Like, don't care. Just just keep calling her phone. Get her on that phone. And so he's like, all right. And Ten minutes later, he gets, puts a three-way in. She's very annoyed because she thinks this is going to be a sales call. Right? She thinks I'm going to try and upsell her. I can help you with your problem. I'm like, ignore everything else. The only thing that matters is you need to tell them to stop. You have a bunch, you have a crime scene at your business and you have a bunch of IT people that are tromping around in that crime scene and they have no idea what they're doing and they're probably just going to try and restore everything from back up and wipe out all the actual evidence of whatever happened. Mm -hmm. Do Does your cybersecurity policy, do you have a cybersecurity plan? Yes. What is it? Five million dollars. Okay, great. Have you called them yet? No. You tell the IT people to stop. You call the, the your cybersecurity company and you find out what your policy says states you're supposed to do and maybe they'll allow them to work maybe they have the certifications and the credentials for the insurance company to say yeah we bless this these people are trained or maybe you just have some guys that are, they have no idea what they're doing they're not preserving evidence they're not using new drives they're not going about the process normally so hang up with me i'm not trying to sell you anything go get your get your affairs in order but that's the first thing you've got to do she calls me back a half hour later she's like you might have just saved me five million dollars. Huh, yeah. Because I called my poli my my cyber insurance policy holder, and they said we have three companies that you're that are allowed to do that work. They're not on the list. We won't cover any of this. And so she's like, "Will you send a team? Yeah, well, we can have an incident team there in eighteen hours, guaranteed. Part of the policy. So you need to tell them to stop working, and they did. And they had barely started the process, so they didn't really do anything. But they that's the best moment. I mean, the sec second best moment, right? The best is do it before it happened. But 
the second best is the easiest, the lowest cost you have. Because from there, what would happen? Yeah, then you're just out like a day's operating. And it happened on a Friday, so they were able to recover everything over the weekend. And they just, they, they did do a restore, but they took the drive and they took the data and they took everything and they had forensic data and they could cool. go follow the check, 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 right? Here's your, we'll pay for everything. But most people, just like they don't know what to do in a financial breach or a house fire or water comes suddenly spilling out of the ceiling, like, who, who's the first person I call? What do I do? Most people don't know. Yeah. And, and it's a valid point. That, yeah. That's a good thing, right? You, as a, I, I've seen, I saw a meme online, which I'm sure a lot of people have seen. You know, it just shows a, a, a power outlet on the wall and water shooting out the power outlet. And they're like, do I call a plumber or an electrician? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> or a priest for that. Oh, right. Jesus. <laughs> or insurance company. That's if it's blood. Yeah. Well, you call yes. a priest if it's yeah. blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it's blood, just, yes. Just put your cup under there. Like, mm-hmm. okay. this guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If it's a wine, it's um, a what brewery. It's so called a brewery. Hey, man. <laughs> I've got a free supply in here, or a cheap supply. It could still be a priest. Can you uh, <laughs> outlet me for just a just a splash? Thank you. You want a cup or a splash? Just, uh, yeah, just a little tad bit more. Thank you. Just a just... little uh, Yeah, just a little, just a little <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, sir. A little bit more. Bota bots. I know, it's too convenient. What has mm-hmm. been... It makes you drink more. The question coming. Yeah. What has been one of your experiences where that you can share? That, yeah, that you can share that a they the client or the company were so far gone and the hackers have uh, gathered so much of of the information that you're like, you know, it's just a lost cause and you just need to, you know, pull the driver, re- restart. You know, cut your losses, pay that five million dollar. Like, or what? What was the worst scenario that you've ever experienced? Once upon a time. <laughs> so, in a in a badly configured Microsoft Office environment, like there, most people don't realize that there's there's a back end there which is. Microsoft Azure, now called Entra, um, and there's a bunch of pieces of that. If you have a really experienced hacker, not just getting into like email accounts, but they're off in your Azure tenants creating guest accounts and data blobs that are shared with other people, like you can get so far down into a tenant that you can't recover it. Hmm. You're, like you're never you're never going to get this guy out, whoever this is. Um, and you just have to blow the entire thing away. Like the entire the entire domain has to go. The entire Jesus. tenant has to go. All the, Everything in it has to go. Like you can have backups and you can have that data. But like you have to, you have to burn it to the ground. Right. You, don't like, know, you don't know how far long before it was there. If, if you run a backup from a month back, he still could be there. Yeah. yeah. Do average dwell time is between uh, 100 and depending, depends on the PowerPoint you're using, between 130 and 180 days. Let me ask a question. What, what does it take for anyone, us, anyone with a company that owns a company um, it, to realize, to understand the real risk of, risk of just so, uh, what you just said? You know how... How how hard it would be to convince this guy and say, "Hey, you truly need this. You need your team and everyone to understand that." Wouldn't it be worth it. It you so on my keyboard is the hmm. I'll find it here in a second. I swear yeah, this is like. Matrix. <laughs> this is the Ford Fleet Key. Okay. You can buy this on Amazon. Ford Fleet Key, 20 bucks. Okay. If you buy more than five vehicles, I think it's five, uh, at a time from Ford, it's keyed to that key. Mm-hmm. Across America. Theoretically, the world. And Ford tells you 
you're going to need to rekey these. You're going to need to do X, Y, and Z. But nobody ever factors that into their budgets, right? They go, they get their, they get their vehicles, and then they find a locksmith, and the locksmith like, it's going to be $120,000 to rekey all these how you want them to key. Right. And they're just like, shh. We'll pass on that. We've mm -hmm. already got keys. It's already functional. And, you know, we got this working. Uh, the particular personal example is a law enforcement agency here within driving distance of where we are now. And in front of the police chief, we got into the Ford Explorer, just opened it up, unlocked it, got in the driver's seat, started it right up, backed it up five feet, parked it. Then with a high-powered magnet, just went pop, took the AR out, popped the shotgun out, popped the laptop out. And she's just standing there, like, losing her mind. Because <laughs> yeah. we just, like, all right, the engagement's starting. Doo -doo -doo, pop, pop, pop. Like, like it's it's not even three minutes. And we've shown her that we can take any other Ford Explorers that they want. That we want. And I can take anything inside it that we want. Which, of wow. course, then, then, then it was like, all right, I'm going to take that laptop. And I hope that laptop's encrypted. I hope there's some like, command and control on the laptop that you can, you know, you got copy trace turned on or some other thing to like remote blow that up. Because if not, that laptop and everything on it's mine. Easy. Even if it's encrypted, it's just going to take a long time. Maybe I can get into it. Maybe I can't. But you're certainly putting a lot of time barriers in the way. That times a hundred across America. And it doesn't take much to then just go from, like, literally, when you search for that key, Amazon just floods you with, oh, here's a bunch of other pen testing keys. True. Other pen testing yeah. gear. And here's the, here's the key ring of 280 uh, pieces of heavy heavy equipment, like cats yeah. and Kubotas and all this. Other, you want to drive a backhoe? Here's the default key for all the backhoes for every Kubota in America. <laughs> right? It's just, it's just right there. And it just all spirals out of control really, really fast. And people don't know how to manage all of that data. Like you're 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 effectively just sh opening the door and showing them an entire world. It's like suddenly going into the Willy Wonka chocolate factory, and you had no idea that any of this stuff existed. It's it's the same thing. So it gets really hard to convince a business owner. I haven't been doing any of this. I must I must be doing something. Right. Okay. Right, I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm lucky or whatever that is. Is that? Yeah. But I also think there's kind of a good nature of, of human beings for the most Ooh. part. You know, it's only select few criminals out there that you know do want to see harm done to other people and stuff. What you're showing is that the possibility and the reality of it is super easier than than what normal people would think. I would have never thought of that. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. You when, know, when I was uh, doing DoD contracting. Um, with whatever it, you know, Lockheed Martin, L3, Northrop Grumman, uh, overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan. One of the things That's where I know you from. Constantly. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know me from Afghanistan? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Gotta have to explain that. <laughs> where were you? Uh, Camp Leatherneck. Oh, no. so so no coupon times. You just you just flew through. No, I was there for eight months. Oh, can I? Mm -hmm. um, Oh, Camp Leatherneck. Camp Leatherneck, yeah. I went to Dwyer and a FOB, but yeah. I was in Camp Leatherneck for eight months. Yeah, no, mine was mine was all, all flagpole stuff. Kandahar and Kabul and Okay. Nothing none of the none, nothing that didn't have generals. Gotcha, gotcha, Pretty gotcha. Much. Okay. But over there, one of the things that they hammered on was it which we don't talk about here in America, is insider threat. Right? Who inside your company or your organization wants your data, wants your database. Shit, they preach that nonstop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nonstop. I mean, Robert Hansen was like a screensaver on, on the zipper boxes, right? Which is the FBI who was in charge of finding the Russian mole that was inside the FBI, but he was the Russian mole that was inside the FBI. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in charge. They, they made a movie about him. But the that is not translated well into any business corporate infrastructure in America, mm -hmm. then your employees are going to be the ones that have the ability to do the most damage, and you're typically not protecting yourself from them at all. Instead, you're doing the opposite. Like, here's the CRM. You have access <laughs> to everything. Thanks. Yeah. 
the number of law offices I know where they're like, well, a lawyer just, you know, cop, you know, downloaded our entire contact list and is going to run off and try to open office on his own practice. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It, it happens. I mean, the, 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 the War Thunder, the, all the distros online of like War oh. Thunder, or World of Tanks yep. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like people are posting top secret schematics and just because there's literally a Russian guy on one side being like, that's not how this works. There's, not, there's no armor there. Oh, yeah, there is. You know, there's armor there. Let me show you. Here's the schematic. Like, people are just getting in social engineering fights <laughs> yep. with, with people. And we're like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to show you exactly what the schematic looks like. Let me go download this on a USB. Uh, Pee-wee top level. Right? System. <laughs> My, <laughs> yeah. this is fun time. My goodness. That's uh, human nature. I know. Yeah. Let me show you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it. It was a, the the cy- the cybersecurity analyst for the Air Force who had full top secret clearance that had a level of clearance that he should not. He had access to clearances above what he was supposed to at his time. He was like 20, 21. I can't remember his exact age, but he was super young. He was just posting like troop movement in the Ukraine on discords. Like he's just like. Yep. And it was just for clout. Like, he wasn't getting paid. Jesus. He was just trying to gain... Humoring. He was just trying to gain a reputation, get people to follow him so he could become social media clout. Like, what... What, how, what do you do with that? How do you, how do you train that out of people? It, it becomes weird when you're like... You have to watch the people that are watching things. And, and who can really afford that from a normal business organization structure? Right. Right. In the end of the day, you need people to run any business. Yeah. Businesses are people, and they're not entities. Yeah, some companies, they become an entity because they've been around for 100, 150 years, 200 years or whatever, right? Uh, so the owner's not there. The family is not even there anymore that created that business. So yeah, the business is some sort of entity, but it's still- People running it. It's, that it's people running it. There's people running it. And the people running it might not have any idea what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And the people below them might not have anything to do with what they're doing. And then the people working it might not have any idea what they're doing. And you just have a, a nightmare of a show and eventually something falls apart. Yeah. It's, it's, mm. But sometimes people aren't paying attention to what they need to pay attention to. But they don't even know they need to pay attention to. What would you recommend... <laughs> From your perspective and in your experience, could a normal layman person do to protect themselves from anything? Basic, basic, like you said, Microsoft wow. Defender installed in your laptop is going to delay. First thing, virus. don't click any link. Don't click any links. PDFs. Don't, don't download Type porn that. on your phone. Like, you know. Don't answer to those uh, scam likely calls. Yeah. Should most people be using VPNs on the regular? Does that matter? All right, I'm going to need to get credit cards. Credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> social too? Serious, serious question. No, I Yo, you don't need to. Offer. <laughs> you probably already have it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sure you already have access I mean, as soon as you walked in the room. <laughs> the, Texas, the Texas State database got breached. So, that, I mean, that all got done. Too, yeah. So. yeah. Right, uh, one, the OPM hack, right? Anyone who had a security clearance, that's out there. Right? Yeah. So, it's just, you just... It, it becomes a, how do I function? Because you have to know, you know, you could just take your laptop and throw it in the river um, or leave it on a boat, uh, drive it to a bridge. Um, and you could, <laughs> uh, like, but you have to function. You have to gain joy out of life. You want to play video games online. You want to surf YouTube. You want to do stuff. Understanding that if somebody's really saying you absolutely need this, like, they're probably trying to sell you something. Right. Um, but the realities are some pretty basic, simple things. Have multi-factor on everything, mm-hmm. right? Two-factor authentication. Right. Not necessarily two-factor authentication on your phone, but two-factor somewhere, right? What is the your lowest common denominator? You guys playing 
tic tac toe over here? What's going no, on? No, I just feel uh, like while you're speaking, I, I'm building up this um, process here to understand. So, <laughs> we're in a mind map. Yeah, multi, multi, yeah <laughs> multi factor authentication so that you have some barrier so that a username and a password is not going to uh, really? get out. Right? Yeah. So, somebody's going to go out. I go online, I've got access to 26 billion email accounts and passwords. Uh, it's super cheap, super easy to go do that. Right. So can I just throw username and names and passwords around and get into people's accounts? Uh, yes. So I should put a barrier on that. That's multi-factor authentication. That can be a physical token, like a UB key. That's like the most common right now, Y-U-B-I-K-E-Y, -Y, which is a USB or a near-field communication for your phone. Um, because... Your access is dictated usually by one of three things, something you know, which is a password, something you are, your facial recognition, optical, something you have. In the older days, that was like your, R, your, your, your uh, RSA token generator that people would have their key ring. Yeah. That every 60 seconds would reset. That's the same thing as like your, your two-factor authentication. It's the same RS, uh, one-time pad, OTP, uh, that allows you to authenticate with somebody else and then poof you're in i've got that extra thing but if i'm gonna put all of my multi-factor authentication on my phone then i lose my phone yeah how do i then go recover all my stuff like i don't i, I you can go into the store and you're like i lost my wallet lost my phone i mean you're practically not a person anymore yeah so you got to have some sort of way to branch that out where you've got a ub key and you're making a clone of it or you've got a backup phone that sounds ridiculous, but I've got 20. So they're not all backups, but like, do you have a way to go become functional again? And it's, you've tried it. It's not a desktop exercise. You've done the thing. I have swapped my life from this phone to this phone. I resync them up. I put this phone in the safe deposit box. Mm -hmm. And then I run off this phone for six months and then I swap back. And then I know that the phone in the safe deposit box is good. Do I have a way, whether it's an MDM, mobile device manager, uh, you know, that could just be a find my phone. That could, can I kill it via iCloud? Can I kill it via Samsung? Can I kill it via a portal somewhere? Right. Say, hey, this phone got stolen from me. Where is it? Oh, it's in Mexico. Hit this button, wipe all the data. I'm, I'm good. Now I'm going to go to my safety boss box and then get my, my backup phone. Um, a lot of people are going to be like, man, that sounds like a lot of work. It's way less work than trying to recover everything manually. Yeah. Because that's all that stuff you're never going to recover. Uh, then you've got the, whether you need a VPN or not. Uh, VPNs are just... I might be address. Uh, yeah, no, but not really. So That's what I was wondering, the, the efficacy of it. You're, you're encrypting your traffic between you and the new exit. So your exit onto the internet is usually your internet service provider. So you got... Your network, you've got a router. That router is usually provided to you by the internet service provider. And then you, when you in, inter, intersect with the internet, they see, oh, you're coming from, pardon me, this IP address, you're at Spectrum, you're in Austin. Okay, there you go. When you have a VPN, you're encrypting that tunnel and you're connecting to another server somewhere else and all of your data is in an encrypted tunnel so that Spectrum doesn't see any of it. So your new exit node is the UK, so you can watch BBC shows, sure. or you know uh, Africa, so you can watch some shows there. Or you're you're trying you're trying to hide where you're coming from, or you're trying to get access to things that you need. Uh, in the case of uh, hackers outside of America, they're VPNing into America, so they can then attack infrastructure that's been geofenced. Don't let anybody outside of America talk to me. Oh, great. I'll just go pretend I'm in America. Uh, so all you're doing is changing who gets to see your traffic. Uh, and a good rule of thumb there is if it's free, you're the product. So uh, internet yeah. service providers do sell traffic. They sell your traffic history. So if you're yeah. going to Pornhub all the time, they know and they're selling that to advertisers. Out loud in Texas. Yeah. Now. And then they'll, they'll, they'll turn you in. I'll so, turn you. <laughs> so the well, turn me on. The, yeah, well, there is. Come on, Texas. I use a VPN to send me to New York. You know. Yeah, especially if you're into denial play, then it's like, oh yeah, stop me, Texas. <laughs> stop. <laughs> 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 um, so, so uh, 
ultimately <laughs> graphic. <laughs> Tell me what to do, Big Texas Dad. Um, so the concept of the VPN is best used when it's on a network that you don't trust. Mm. Right? You okay. go to a hotel, you're out Starbucks. at a convention, you're at a Starbucks, anywhere that's a network you don't own that you can't realistically control any of the other devices that are on it, those are must-have VPNs. Okay. Because those are networks that I could live on and do man-in-the-middle attacks mm -hmm. and pretend to be the network and right. tell you that I am the network and then all traffic goes through me. Okay. Yeah. And then when you authenticate for services, I can grab those tokens or I can do other sorts of shenanigans. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that can happen that's when you want a VPN, is when you're not on your networks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Period. Um, Otherwise, just you're basically torrenting, streaming stuff on websites that are paid, but you find a free stream. Mm -hmm. Any of that matter? You want to not be... Uh, if you're torrenting... Mm -hmm. I would which, never. of course... I would never. No one only, does. You're only doing legal content, right? But if you yes. are doing illegal content... Because someone was was baiting you, right? They're like, hey, here's a link to the latest Ghostbusters film. Right. You can download it here. And you're not on a VPN. They get to see where you are. And then this is when the, the Napster nightmares of the early, you know, right. 2000s, you know, the, the RIAA comes at you and says, you owe us $150 million yeah. to yeah. download 20 songs. Right. right. Yeah, that was a big thing. Right? Uh, and that, a VPN would have protected you from that. It's a big thing with LimeWire and all that stuff back then, I think. It's still now. Kaza. Um, yeah. yeah. It's still now, though. I have a question then, to mm -hmm. you, Hilton. How many layers of protection do you need in Brazil when you drive? How many layers of protection? You, you park your car or you decide to leave home. How many different, how many ways well, to secure? In Brazil, you only need one. It's, it's the little guy with the, you know, the frontalinha. Oh, the, yeah. The so this guy that... Brazil is packed of guys outside. Hey, I'm gonna take the car. I'm gonna take, take care of the car. car. Yeah, just yeah. If you three don't dollars. pay the guy, yeah. if you money, don't pay the guy, you know, car two bucks. Yeah, and you then scratch, your you car, car will get scratched, be stolen, you know, broken into. But if you pay the guy, two bucks, and then you're good. <laughs> your car's so good. you only need one. Yeah, your leg. guy's good, but um, but seriously, because I gotta just <laughs> protection money. For real, because you see, just sort of like, you I out. need analogies. Some people like can, can go with analogies. I like, kind of need analogies. So think about that. You have the your you have the security system, the whole security system, right? But right? you have your whole, your whole security system, like all all whistles and bustles everywhere in your phone, everywhere. What else? You probably you would how do you call it when you just uh. Jam like the, the harness, um, like jam the jam the steering wheel. Yeah, the steering like wheel. The lock, the lock it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the gears, man. There was like seven or eight I mean, I, that I can remember. Before leaving home, I I just asked myself, do I have this? Do I have that? Is it is this on? Is, okay. So it seems like I don't. I just have on a car insurance and go. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. It's, but you, do you understand yeah, what I'm going with this? Like, yeah, yeah. what kind of layers can we create? Like, the, I use probably VPN. not enough. <laughs> I, I use it. Yeah, I use VPN everywhere because I I don't, I don't want to disconnect and reconnect and then for some reason ink at home and forget. And forget about need, it. You know. Yeah. So, um, and then I was just thinking about <laughs> here, like uh, the flux is this is this. Oh, do you wanna say something about this about the layers? Because if sure, it, you know, when you go out, and one of the things that I kind of describe to people about different types of hacks. One of the types of hackers are just people that are going to the Disney World parking lot. And they're just checking doors. Right. Unlock? No. Unlock? No. Unlock? No. Unlock? No. Unlock? Yes! I'm in. What's in the car? Did you, did you did you follow the sign that's on all the poles? Not responsible. Please hide your vehicle. You know, take your, take your personal assets. Yeah. You know, anything valuable, hide it. Or whatever that is. Take it with you. Your your program to do certain things, locking your car should have been one of them. Like you said, right? you're doing seven or eight things. Uh, your computers and your information is the exact same. Right? Do you have if you could, for a moment, back up your working car 
and make a copy of your working car right here so that if you woke up tomorrow morning and you went to straighten your car and your car didn't work, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that you could restore your working car. Most people would be like, yeah, I'll, I'd do that once a week, right? Why not? Well, you, you have the ability to do that with your computer, but most people don't. Most businesses don't. Right? Most Some businesses can't, right? depending on the amount of data. If you've got 10 terabytes of data, you're not backing it up every night. You have to spend a lot of money to be able to back it. It would take a long time also. Good. You'd have to have a 10 gig backbone instead of a 1 gig backbone. You'd have to have very fast drives. There's, there's all, So it, it becomes a kind of like that checklist. So the checklist for most cybersecurity insurance companies is about 13, 14 things. You've got to check, 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 check. Right? Do, you have, do you have a firewall that has state full of packet inspection and can see what people are doing and where they're going? Yes. Check. What does that mean? That means I can choose that no one in my network can go to Facebook or only my marketing people can go to Facebook and they can only go from nine to five. Does your Wi-Fi automatically turn off when everybody leaves the building? Or is it open at 3 a.m. for somebody to drive into your parking lot and attack your Wi-Fi? Yes. Like there's, there's just a list of things that you have to do to get that insurance. And that list is growing because the number of attacks are growing. So it is, it's certainly a layers game and layers of security, kind of like an onion or an ogre, as, <laughs> as, as the joke is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but every single layer has value because of the, ev the event that it's protecting you against. Right. And hence my question before, uh, you know, that I asked before, how difficult it is to convince someone, you know, of the true costs or how to feel it. Because when it comes, Oh, it hits hard. And then, as you said, you got to build from scratch. We just, we just saw it. We're onboarding a new client right now. And they were a construction firm. And they came to us and said, hey, our network is really slow. And our current IT people can't seem to solve that problem. Okay, maybe we can solve that problem. And while I'm walking around the, prop, the building, the property, uh, looking at their IT stuff, well, I, I look at how to break into places. Right? Mm -hmm. My my or origin story, so to speak, uh, is from physical security because of my father. So I'm looking at windows and I'm seeing like clear signs of people trying to break into windows. And I'm like, oh, what are you? What's with the windows? And they're like, oh yeah, we have a, a a homeless unhomed problem, whatever the term is at the moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's trying to be PC Jeez. and. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we might need to, you know, address that from a security system point of view. Uh, but our network is slow. And then I, I run some scans of the network. I'm like, yeah, your network is slow. And there's not a lot of stuff secured. And then I do a Wi-Fi scan. I'm like, oh, I think I found out why your network's slow. And I found out why you have a homeless problem. You're giving free Wi-Fi. You, you have, you have an unsecured Wi-Fi on your, your network that is connected to the internet. So there's literally homeless people coming here because you're providing free Wi-Fi for them and that's slowing your network down. Are you kidding me? And the IT guys couldn't figure that and out. They're, well, yeah. well, they're all, our, all, all their IT guys are remote. Yeah. Nobody's walking on site and actually looking around and being like, why do you have four SSIDs? You're not sharing an apartment complex with people. You're not sharing a building in a strip mall. I shouldn't be picking up other antennas easily. And they're all named after your business. But this one doesn't have a lock on it. Click. Oh, I have I have internet. So one thing can cascade into other problems. And it, right. it's just how are you dealing with that and how do you choose to solve it? Maybe you wanted to give Wi-Fi to the homeless. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a, a horrible thing depending on what your business is and your industry. Sure. But you need to segregate that and have that be on a separate route. There are ways separate. to do that, right? Yeah. And <laughs> you know, just like when you go into a healthcare organization, they give you free Wi-Fi so you can fill out the forms. Mm -hmm. There's still like a passcode, you know, here's our Wi-Fi, or welcome one exclamation mark, or whatever the, the, the dumb password is. Um, but nonetheless, <laughs> that Wi-Fi should still turn off at 2 a.m. It shouldn't be functional for people to drive up <coughs> in front of the waiting room and log into the, the public Wi-Fi that they've put to be there. So it's just everything internet related should really be treated as a big wire, like power or network is being dropped into the middle of the parking lot. 
That's right. And how do you want to secure that? If you could see it, you would do that. You yeah. know, you, if it was physical, okay, look, I'm providing this until they, I have to protect. You would protect if you knew how dangerous it is. Yeah. So are you, are you providing uh, security consulting, basically saying your problem is this, this is your solution to it? Uh, so if I can get into your profession, because it's, I have a follow-up question. Sure. That. So my company, which is Titanium Computing, uh-huh. is a we're, a, we're an MSP. We are a managed service provider. Somebody hires us and we take care of all of their IT stuff. It's just that you also, you're also getting a $350,000 a year guy right. coming along with that. And normally you can't have access to those levels of cybersecurity professionals. So, uh, I have, a, I literally have mugs at Titanium that on one side have the Titanium computing logo and on the other side just says just another chicken shit IT company, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm trying to keep my ego low. Yes. There are people that are better than me. There are hackers that are better than me. I know many of them by name. I, mean, I drink beers with some of these guys. Jesus Christ. So, like, named hackers that are on government watch lists that are not American because... They they did stuff for America and American. You know, if I if I went to China, I might vanish, right? Uh-huh. Because I did DoD and I did deployments. And right. It, it's a known thing that I do cybersecurity. You can go find me on YouTube. I've interviewed other people's shows, so it it becomes a thing that that happens. So we do do cybersecurity consulting. We do do pen testing, physical and logical. Uh, I've broken into banks. I've broken into hospitals. I get hired for that kind of engagement, but. My team of 12 are effectively people that are ha- people I'm trying to train to become hackers, to think like hackers, but you have to be able to do IT mm-hmm. to become a hacker. Yes. It's an ethical hacking, basically, in the greater... Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> to put it politely, to put it politely. Oh my God. You know? uh, but, but, and I guess my follow-up... Yeah, those are your words. Yeah. But I guess my, my, my follow-up question is, how many clients have you gone to, as, as the example you provided with the construction company, and you said, this is your problem, X, Y, and Z, this is the solving factors, we can, we can do it for X amount of money, and they go... Well, I don't. I don't want to do it. Do, is that a very common thing? Oh. What percentage of it, or the the, the law enforcement, the uh, the police station? Yeah, they never fix their problem. Wow, Jesus! We I'm got nice. into absolutely everything. We got into every room they had. We got into their evidence lockup. We were tossing around a five pound bag of cocaine, and they're just like, we don't have budget. Really, it's a political conversation. We can't fix. But yeah, business. but that, in that case, it's yeah, it, it's all private. Sector, right. So right. They, no, I understand. Yeah, I understand that. But I know the problem exists wise. at least. But yeah. Yeah. Am I going to voting and in two years time they go like, okay, they're in a better you. position right. than they were before, at least with the knowledge yeah. of that. Yes. So it becomes lots of risk assessment questions. Yes. Are they yes. are yeah, they yeah, comfortable yes. with the risk and the likelihood? Like we all are comfortable with the risk and the likelihood of getting in a car accident. We know what's going to happen. When I was, you know, my, my wife would message me and she's like, oh, I'm so worried about you. You're over in Afghanistan. You know, there's rocket attacks and all these things happen and people trying to get on base and suicide vests. You know, those were all, except for the rockets, those were all really rare events. Rockets were practically every night. Um, but... You still have, you know that when you get out. And then I would counter to my wife. I'm like, you know, when you look at the statistics, it's much more likely I'm going to die on I-35 <laughs> than I am in Afghanistan. And she'd be right. like, that doesn't make me feel better. I'm like, I'm more worried about you. You're driving around in Austin. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so the very often people will turn a blind eye. Like the same, the same concept of, yeah, that wart doesn't look good, but yeah, I'm not going to go to the doctor. Right. Yeah. Right. My my prostate feels yeah. weird, but uh, you know well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go have that looked at. Right. I don't want to finger my ass. <laughs> or something much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, some sort of jokes that I go like, uh, you know, the you went to a prostate exam, and then uh, the doctor uh, is doing some work down there, and then he puts one hand in your shoulder. So just relax, yeah. and then like, and then, but you're not relaxing. 
And then he puts the other hand in your shoulder. <laughs> 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 Come on, man. Hey, hey, hey. Relax. Oh, yeah, there's something wrong there. Hey, why'd you take the gloves off? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really kind of weird. You said that something that, um, unless the guy, at least the guy knows that something's happening, right? Yes. As an accountant, I would say, you have to put in the books. You have to put in the books. If you don't put in the books, you are not contingent, you create a contingency for that, and uh, you're cheating. It, it, it's you're funny. cheating. It's funny you mentioned uh, the uh, the account. One of the, the funny stories is I was doing, there's a, a billion dollar wealth management company okay. here in town, and they've got all sorts of CPAs and other people that they interact with. And this one particular CPA firm that I do work with interacts with the wealth management firm and they've got multiple very high net worth individuals working with them. and well the wealth management firm's asking me questions about the security of the cpa office because they're concerned about the you know how how that those the, that data commingles and i'm like yeah, right. oh well you know uh you know we do this and do this and do this and we try to t- train everybody not to plug cell phones and charge them into their laptops or their desktops and she's like what why is that? And I'm like, oh, well, there's cables. You know, OMG cable is just an example. That's a computer. And, you know, I sprinkled those around the office because they look like perfect charging cables. Mm-hmm. And if you plug it in your phone, hack your phone, plug it in your computer, hack your computer, you plug it in both, it's really game over. Yes. Um, and she's like, what? And then I just hear this thump, 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 bang, 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 bang. And it sounds like, because, you know, I've got my phone in my ear. I'm like, what is going on? And it just sounds like the phone gets dragged across the carpet and then hangs up. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? And I call back and no answer. And then I call back a couple minutes later and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. I was charging my cell phone in my desktop. <laughs> and you're telling me that that's such a cybersecurity risk that I went to go unplug it and I, I tripped on the phone cord and then I like, like like the whole thing. So they literally like the half their desk went all over the place. And I did get you know my ear got dragged across the carpet. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but these people are managing you know who knows how many billions of dollars. Right. And now they're like you know what hey we're learning things on this call so we're just going to assume that you're doing the right things over there. And I'm like hey let me in there and they're like well, well, let me talk to you know we like our IT guy thanks my clip right? it's just one of those okay and that's really the biggest challenge is getting people to understand that cybersecurity is not IT. Right. You have to go to another level. You have to understand how all of the IT works and then you have to know how to break it. And not every IT person is that. Most mm-hmm. IT people are not. And that's just normal, right? If you took your car to a mechanic and the mechanic looked at it and said, all right, you've got a Honda, I can fix this, everything's fine. You could take that Honda to everybody in town, and everybody in town can work on that Honda. The moment you pull up in an F1 Formula racer, every car mechanic in town should go, This I'm, I'm not the guy for this. Right. And that's the difference. Like It's just a different skill set. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you know, a Formula One pit mechanic is understands chemical composition of the fuel ratio inside the engine they understand the grip of the tires on the racetrack they know what is and isn't compliant they know what the weight variances are they they have an entire other level that they operate at exactly. and that's really the difference between a normal IT person and a real cybersecurity professional in that they have to just know so much more and they don't and usually the IT people the moment they break into the cybersecurity profession, they're poached by Amazon, eBay, Meta, Google. I mean, any large company that's trying to hire those people away. And so you never have a cybersecurity professional typically inside a normal IT environment. I learned that with the stock exchange. Mm-hmm. When I was reading that, I, 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 the granularity of details these guys bring when they just I mean, in some communities, right? It's I. It's a different language. I mean, it is actually English, but uh, yeah. uh, but, yeah, but, yeah, but it's a completely different language. You know, yeah. um, I. It, 
It isn't my English, all right? It was just because it was hard to get it. What was mm -hmm. going on there? So this is the level of, break of it all down, yes. Man. Just trying to break it all down. Yeah, we you gotta understand. Like, think about something that you're really a specialist. Mm -hmm. You you gotta yeah. understand. This guys might be yeah. This guys <laughs> might be doing this for so for such a long time. You know, uh, this guys. You see, they will feel comfortable to get in in your company or mine or whatever. Uh, with the same easiness that you guys would sell differently, you know, like thousands of different types of floors, you know, and, did he, and you guys know in detail, right? Yeah, yeah so it's, it's like when Richard was saying that he walked into a building and he sees all the uh, breaking into, you know, points of the building, you know, physical. We walk into a house, we notice every single mistake mm -hmm. that an installer made it's like a glass, right? So you put a glass That's why and... I don't invite Hilton over at my house anymore. Oh, yeah. he's like... I mean, I went I went to <laughs> Corn's house and like, why didn't they float it in here? They yeah. put a reducer to go into the, the, yeah. the dining area because they had the carpet in there. And he didn't know that. It was fine. Oh, now I that the you house know... like it is. Yeah, I was like, yeah. God damn it, Hilton. Now you know. And it's like, I, I pointed out, so like, why is this and done this way? And you every time, too. Yeah, I That's step over. And now, like, yeah. I tell people that all the time. It's like a, it's a curse. We see stuff and then as soon as you noticed it, now you'll yes, never not yeah. see it, oh. and it's like you're better off not knowing some of those things with flooring at least. I'm going to ruin that for you right now. Construction. So one of my guys was a union cabler. <laughs> is it union cabler in California? Um, Satcom, Air Force, Telecom, super knowledgeable guy. And his father did big construction projects, and he walked me around. He's like, "This is the eye for construction you have to have." It's like this is how you can tell you have a good a good crew, and he starts pointing things out. Just that light switch. Mm -hmm. The screws are like this. Mm -hmm. They should be like this. Right. If you have a real team, if you put that together, I'm sorry. If you, if you have a real team who's going through I a did. construction project, your outlets all need to look the same. Same color, they're all level, all the screws are going in the same way, the same direction. Like you have that granularity for detail. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. So Hilton's probably gonna fix that light switch. Yeah. <laughs> in, in a little bit. Maybe Dylan. <laughs> yeah, I'm no Look at the guy. Dylan's desk and look at my desk. You see Hilton's His desk is all neat and mine is not. Yeah, they're they're both. That's not No. Sure. That's not. <laughs> My my desk is way worse. I promise worse you, just my presence yeah. being here, I feel like it's made everything just less messy. Because it I, used to be worse. Yeah, I think uh, you know after Dylan. <laughs> Sometimes after here, hours, I clean. I organized a little bit my desk. Yeah, it's still. But you guys are gonna know. Let me get things. another one. Let me get another one. Uh, I, I think Richard one. said he wanted to try backwards. He was <laughs> fully intrigued by it. This, um, this one isn't done yet. <laughs> hey, but, this is also yeah. tell me about you're the one that I never tried it. That's just a. <clears throat> Got some diesels in here. Yeah. Have oh, it's diesel yours. Before? It's for huh? you guys. Diesel. How many do you have? Uh, oh, diesel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So time. how was the how was that one? It was a. Uh, it was good. It's yeah. good. I had. I haven't had this one before. This I've had. I've been saving that one for. Yeah. yeah. Which one was it? Melania. Melania V. Yeah, Melania V. Yeah, it's a. Yeah. It's all of right. Yeah, it's Oliva, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, like oh you're gonna huh? know. One of my favorites. What wood buckles at what water? Like, if this wood is warped, how much water it took over time to warp this? Like, you'd be like, hey, if you spilled water all over this and it, and you cleaned it up within six hours, you're not going to have warped wood, depending on the type of wood. Yeah, depending on the those, type of wood. Those are yeah. things you yeah, know because know. that's your industry and your exactly. specialty. Yes. And Granularity then, in there. Yes. We all have those. And, and also, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, 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 ju I just know I took no letter for, uh, from. Um, also, uh, they don't know only the forest. They also can have the you know the eagle the eagle's view, and they they can see the pro you know the whole thing how it happens. Um, but something for me, it's only at my eye level. These guys would be able to see the whole thing, uh, probably given the right. You know, are you all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought, thought it was I, was, your, I, was, I was cleaning my pen. Oh, okay. I thought I pulled it out. And I was like, no, I just <laughs> oh my god! Broke my pen. But I, I just slipped out. So sorry. No, it's just that um, because this is also important, right? So yeah. we are 
we only see short side and they are seeing the whole thing looking for one opportunity these guys need one opportunity yeah and there are like five thousand employees uh, you know at dell mm -hmm. for example <laughs> you know like just one yeah just all it takes just need one yeah like the uh there was a uh common story at dell for a while there was a developer who was writing code for the the network switches uh -huh. and he had outsourced his job to china he had hired three Chinese developers, yeah. and he had, and they were working on the VPN project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they had access to Dell's VPN. He he was letting them remote through his house. One day there was a power outage; they couldn't remote through his house. He called in to work that day, so he wasn't answering his phone. He was out on vacation, and they were like, "Man, we we have a deliverable. We need to meet this deliverable." So they're like, well, how do we solve this problem? Oh, we'll just log into the direct VPN of Dell and update the code repository in Dell. Manual. Jesus Christ. Uh, Dell. And they did. They, they, they were doing their job. So they so Dell's, Dell's security team's like watching this. Like, why do we have a VPN connection attempt from China? Well, that happens all the time. Yeah, but this one just was successful. Yes. Somebody just successfully logged in from China and they're... VPN. Working? Yeah, exactly. They're doing work. Yes. What's happening? <laughs> wow. What's, what, what's going on here? They're this just trying to ask, they're cool. trying to push data. That's crazy. And they're trying to update they're trying to patch security bugs. Get the heck out of here. What is what is going on? And then they find out that he the reason he was the top performer and the reason that he was the number one on the team and all of these things was he had outsourced his job to three people. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh God. Yeah. of course he was fired. We, yes. Yeah. Well, we, we have a lot. We know a lot of stories. They never confirm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yes. Yeah, so you see, we you got a, a thumbnail there. It's like how vulnerable are we, <laughs> or how vulnerable are we online? Both and uh, mm -hmm. uh, or huh? both with how you, cyber vulnerable yeah. are you? Yeah. Now we have the uh, AI going yeah. crazy too. So. Huh? build AI tools to hack. Yeah, we haven't even discussed that part. I think we should leave the AI for a second visit from Richard. Yes. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. To be continued. Sure. AI be, is uh, a, certainly a Pandora's box that we've opened up. And it will, it will change everything. I mean, the CEO of NVIDIA right now is saying, don't even learn to develop. Don't even learn to I code. I saw that. Yeah. yeah saw Just that. learn how yeah. to be an AI prompt engineer. Yeah. What was it Devin? Devin was is he, isn't it called Devin? I think so. from what from where? What the heck is it called Devin? I thought some uh, some young guy just created or just launched this this uh, this program. It's like ChatGPT but for programming. Mm. Type in any language that you want, Sorry, and it just populates. It just does it does software engineering for you. Yeah, you do not do any so, software engineering at all. Stale. It now, does it for you. They're still mm. kind of questionable. You should, at this point, at this stage, you should still know how to develop so you can actually proofread the code. Right. 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 But it's it's certainly coming along. To a point where I think a lot of people's jobs are going to be at, at risk in the, in the future. Yep. All those CEOs are going to be in trouble. Yes. We're going to replace them really easy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, let's, uh, we can continue smoking the cigars and let's yes. finish this episode. That's awesome. And then yeah. uh, we're going to have Richard again. Yes, that would be great. Uh, for more episodes, uh, yeah. having a cigar. Ooh. And uh, I may need to buy more filters to help clean up the air <laughs> a little bit faster. It's, <laughs> my, my, eyes are little... my eyes are just yeah. The room is getting yeah. small, man. Yeah, it's getting too yeah. small of a room. <laughs> I thought this is another advantage of wearing contacts. Right? <laughs> yeah. It helps so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Corin, yes. take us out. Yes, uh, like Hilton just said, thank you very much for watching. I hope everyone has a great night. And again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know if you've been a victim of uh, cybersecurity and, uh, or any preventative measures that you've taken. Some of your experiences that uh, Richard has so kindly yeah. shared with us. Let send, us know if that's been working with send you. Send them some questions because uh, yeah. I'm sure Richard will respond to it. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll make sure that the question goes to him. Uh, yes. He's a good friend. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, subscribe. Yeah. Comment. Like. like. Share with the friends. <laughs> and smoke. <laughs> and smoke. Yeah. yeah. Yes. My Thank buddy. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.